This is Team 14's presentation for the Yanada 320 Challenge. Special thanks goes to S9 Patron Saint and the EGB320 teaching team for their help and support throughout this project. And this is the team that made the project possible. So how did all this start? The problem we were trying to solve was inspired from the discovery of orange soil by 1972's Apollo 17 astronauts, Harrison Smith and Gene Cernan. Fast forward 50 years and the Apollo 17's discovery has sparked another interest of Australian startup Yanada, who has partnered with Australian space agency ASA to present the Yanada 320 Challenge, which challenges teams to autonomously collect simulated samples while avoiding obstacles on a mock lunar surface. The challenge also poses additional constraints relating to space travel, which were the robot must not cost more than 185 Australian dollars, it must not weigh more than 1.2 kilograms, and the entire assembly must fit within a U1.5 cube, a 15 by 15 by 15 centimeter cube. With these constraints, Group 14 presents Matilda. A fully autonomous rover capable of retrieving open samples and occluded samples with obstacle avoidance. According to Peter Cork, a robot is defined as a system which can sense, think and act on its own. Matilda features an omnidirectional catadioptric vision system, which extends a single view camera to a 360 degree view using a reflective catadioptric surface. The vision assembly features a pie camera, an acrylic clear tubing cut to exact height for optimum ground coverage for a 2x2 two two meter field, and a parabolic mirror to reflect the robot's surrounding. The entire vision system is enclosed with a top non-reflective plate and a base mounting plate. The vision system captures a 360 degree image around the robot, providing Matilda a great advantage for path planning and obstacle avoidance. The vision system identifies and localizes all objects of interest in robot's frame of reference, calculating object's distance and bearings from robot's center point. The circular shape of the pipe is used as a reference to reject any false positive readings, as well as object's contour area. Somya will present next on how Matilda traverses the mock lunar surface. For mobility, the rover used a diff drive system using two gripped wheels at the back and two laser cut acrylic plates up front for added stability. The wheels had a 50mm diameter to stop the wheels from getting caught in the lander hole. This system provided greater movement around obstacles and made it easier for the rover to self-adjust when collecting samples. High power motors with 298 to 1 gear ratios were used for the back wheels which were connected to a custom built L298N dual H bridge motor driver, allowing for a maximum forward velocity of 10cm per second to be reached. Some kinematic formulas were used to convert a bearing and velocity from navigation to a PWM signal to control each motor, thus controlling the robot's direction. I will hand over to Joy for navigation. Hello, I'm Joy and I'm the lead engineer for the navigational subsystem. I'm in charge of getting our robot from point A to point B in the most efficient and safest way possible, as well as translating HARD's vision data into meaningful actions. Without good navigational code, you'll either have a robot that is blind and not trying, blind and is trying, Line in, trying a little bit harder, or just a mess that crashes into everything. After translating human common sense into Python, our team now has a robot that can successfully navigate towards samples and rocks, be able to prioritize when multiple samples are in view, avoid obstacles, as well as return to the lander safely. Now in order for the samples to be collected and move with the robot, I have to pass that on to Cervantes to go into further detail. Thanks, Joy. The sample collection comprised of four components. The first component was the L298N motor driver. This connected to a 70 RPM high torque motor, which allowed for precision and strength in the arm to lift rocks and collect samples. The motor was then connected to the collection arm. This was an inverted T-shape to prevent the arm from catching onto rocks during lifting. This arm also acted as a gate for the storage facility. With this storage facility, the ball was driven over for collection and closed to secure the sample. Inside the storage space was also an IR sensor to confirm the bore was within the sample and ready to head back to the lander. If the IR sensor does not detect the bore within the storage space, Matilda returns back to the searching state until it can confirm a bore capture. Overall, the solution worked fairly well and Team 14 is happy with Matilda and look forward to refining it in the future.